All right, guys, thank you for watching this video today. Today, our objective is to identify a positives and a positive phrases. And a positive is a noun or pr pronoun placed beside another noun or pronoun to identify or describe it. So what you're looking for in most cases are, uh, or what you're looking for is this, a noun next to another noun. So we're looking for noun, touching. Uh, let's look at this example. Haley, a math genius, helped me with my calculus. Right here, the word genius is the appositive. A math genius is the appositive here because the math genius and Haley, these two things are the same person. So this noun is the same person as this noun. So this noun's purpose is to identify or describe Haley. So we have this kind of relationship, noun and noun. A lot of appositives tend to have commas on both sides of them, but not all of them. Be very careful. Some appositives do not have commas on both sides. You have to be really careful with appositives because some appositives have commas on both sides and some do not. Appositives that are not essential to the meaning of the sentence are set off by commas. Set off by commas means that there are commas on both sides of the second noun. Here you would have the first noun, and here's the second noun. The, the second noun is set off with commas if there are commas on both sides of it. And this only happens if the appositive is not essential. Essential means that the sentence would uh, would, is not affected by the second noun. Non-essential means that you can delete it, that it's not required for the sentence to make sense. Essential appositives tell which one of two or more and should not be set off by commas. So if the second piece of information, the second noun, clarifies which one of two or more things uh, are being spoken is being spoken about, then you do not have commas because it's essential. Because without that information, without the information of which one, um, the sentence no longer would make sense or we would be very confused. Let's take a look here. Non-essential. My brother, Franklin, is a chess champion. In this case, because there are commas on both sides of Franklin, we can assume that I only have one brother because with the commas, uh, we know that Franklin is not essential. This means it doesn't matter whether or not we know the name of my brother to understand who the chess champion is because I only have one brother and his name is Franklin. But if I had more than one brother, like Cece here, I would not want to put commas. Cece's brother, Hamar, is a basketball player. Because there are no commas, the reader can um, assume that Cece must have other brothers because knowing his name is extremely important. It is essential in this sentence. So the sentences can mean different things if we do or do not have commas. If I put a comma here, though, on both sides of Hamar, now Cece only has one brother because we're saying that um, knowing his name is uh, not essential. So, an appositive phrase contains not just the appositive. An appositive phrase consists of an appositive. It also has any modifiers. So this would be adjectives describing that second noun, or this could be prepositional phrases that are adjective phrases that describe that a positive. So let's take a look at this. Estrella, my best friend in the world, is moving away. Here we have noun number one. And then here is noun number two. So this second noun, my best friend, is an a positive. In the world is more information about my best friend 
that describes my best friend. This is an adjective phrase. It's a prepositional phrase that describes this noun. And together, this whole thing is one appositive phrase. All right. In the second sentence, you see something called uh, inverted syntax. This is where they have changed the traditional word order of a sentence. For the most part, appositives come right after the nouns that they describe. But it is possible to move an appositive to the beginning of the sentence. The effect on the sentence is you get a sentence that sounds something that the character from Star Wars, Yoda, would say. He's known for using inverted syntax. So here, if we read the sentence, you'll see that. An aviation student with lots of talent, Moshi flew yesterday. This is supposed to go in a traditional sense right after the word Moshi, but instead they moved the appositive to the front of the sentence, and you can tell because there's a comma here. If Moshi were the second noun, there would also be a comma here perhaps, but the comma here is a dead giveaway that this front part of the sentence is the appositive. Anyway, this whole thing is a phrase because we have the noun here, an aviation student, and then we have words that describe it, this prepositional phrase, with lots of talent, tells us more about the student. This is our adjective phrase. Let's do a few examples. So here we have the first, in this sentence, here we have the first noun, Dorothy Parker, and then in between the commas we have the second noun, the poet and short story writer. And all of this, uh, both of these things, the poet, short story writer, these are descriptors for Dorothy Parker. So this whole noun uh, phrase here is the appositive, and it's in between uh, the two commas. Here's another one. A college education, a dream of many, is a worthy pursuit. So here we have another example of an appositive in between two commas, and this is a second noun, and a dream of many is another name for a college education. So this second noun, uh, a dream, and, and the prepositional phrase here of many, uh, this is our positive. And then third, the gold ring, that's a noun. A family heirloom, that's a noun. A family heirloom and a gold ring are the same thing. So this a positive describes that gold ring. It's another name for it. Um, that's the positive phrase. So our objective today was to identify a positives and a positive phrases. And if you can remember that we that an a positive is a second noun after a first noun. And a lot of times there are commas on both sides unless this second noun tells us which one of two or more things we're talking about.